turned out I'm much wealthier than people thought. I built a great company. I am very open. I hired top people. I've had great success. I built a great, great company. I built an unbelievable company. Tremendous cash, tremendous company. Some of the great assets of the world. I built a great company, a great, great company. Some of the greatest assets in the world. Some of the greatest real estate assets in the world. Then-candidate Donald Trump touted his success as a businessman early and often on the 2016 campaign trail. His tax records, as reported on by The New York Times, show his companies might not be as great as he's led on. Their latest investigation reveals many of the president's signature businesses reported losing hundreds of millions of dollars over the last two decades. Those losses have helped Mr. Trump avoid paying any taxes to the federal government in 11 out of the 18 years examined by the Times. I want to bring in Tony Schwartz now. He was the president's ghostwriter for his famed book, Trump, The Art of the Deal. He's also the co-author of a new audio book, Dealing with the Devil, My Mother, Trump, and Me, that talks about his experience since co-writing The Art of the Deal. Tony, not welcome. Co- Great to have you with us. Thank you. And not a Sorry. co-author of not I'm not the co-author of Dealing with the Devil. I'm the sole author. The sole author. Absolutely. Thank you for that correction. All right. Well, Tony, welcome. So great to have you with us. Is there anything in particular that stands out to you from the New York Times report on the president's taxes? Uh, At a high level, the extraordinary brazenness of what he did, you know, even in the first two years of his presidency, having the, uh, yeah, I don't know even what you would call it, the uh, the kahunas to pay $750 in tax each of those two years with the risk that it would become public and to do so in a world in which, you know, uh, working class people, um, even moderate income working class people, even low, relatively low income are paying vastly more tax than that. It's just it's a sign of his utter absence of conscience. That's the heart of Donald Trump, no conscience. And when you were working with Donald Trump on the art of the deal, did you note anything out of the ordinary regarding his taxes, any sign of the president perhaps engaging in questionable tax practices? You know, what I was aware of, no, I, I certainly not on a personal level because that part of his life he kept very quarantined as it were, very private. Uh, What I did know about were the extraordinary lengths to which he went to get uh, in his real estate deals, tax abatements to get reductions in taxes and deals on his taxes from governments, often in ways that skirted ethics, sometimes probably were illegal. So I was very well aware in 1986 and 87 that this was a guy who didn't play by any traditional rules. And does the Donald Trump you knew when you were writing the book, did he have the bravado he gave off publicly and that he gives off in the book? Or is there a public facade he puts on for the American people that is much different than the way he is in private? Here's the scary thing. He's the same person in private that he is in public. Um, And, you know, In that sense, he's authentic. You know, from my perspective, he's authentically a a sociopath, but he is authentic. Uh, And I think uh, the thing that really changed is the level of influence that his nefarious instincts had on the world. At the time I wrote the, The Art of the Deal, he was just a, a sort of a buffoon, a, uh, somebody who the media just enjoyed because he was sort of outrageous. But he was just a middle level real estate. Uh, I think the more power, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Trump's a, Trump's a living example of that. And you've said the book, which helped to create this mythology around the president and his wealth, should be recategorized as fiction. How how does this report from the New York Times sort of support that? It certainly supports it. Look, this is a guy 
who has told 18,000 or more lies during his four years in office. And this is really what Dealing with the Devil, uh, my book, is about, because it's more a memoir than it is a book about Trump. But it's about how Trump influenced me, how I tried to find redemption after Trump. And his way of trying to build his life and his career was to run as far as he possibly could from the truth. To, to lie at every turn if it gave if he thought it gave him advantage. My approach was to really start to look for the Trump in me. I think all of us have a, an aspect of Trump in us. The worst aspects of ourselves are the ones we try to avoid. And so this is a book about my attempt to really reckon with all of who I am and to recognize mm -hmm. that there is good and there's bad. And so that's really that's really the the distinction that our the, the two separate paths that we took as as we uh, as we responded to the success of the art of the deal. And when you were working on the book, though, way back then, before you knew what you know now, uh, did you have any suspicion that he was perhaps not being fully honest with you about the extent of his wealth? I didn't have a suspicion. I was absolutely certain that it was true because I was going to, uh, in writing about the deals that the art of the deal reflects, I was going to all the other players in the deal and getting their uh, story of how the deal came to be. And with quite a great deal of regularity, the stories I would be told were at odds with the stories Trump would tell me. The ones that he told me were always self-aggrandizing and made him the hero. The ones that they told me were much more complex, and he was rarely, uh, you know, a, a hero in them. So yes, I had a very good idea, and it's fact, it's the source of the shame that I have carried uh, for the 30 years, 30 plus years since I wrote *The Art of the Deal*. Is that I recognized who this man was, and I made what I thought was a no big deal choice, only to discover that when you violate your own core values, it's going to catch up with you at some point. And it caught up with me when Trump decided to run for president. It's caught up with him now in a series of events, of which this release of taxes is only the most recent, but it's one of many. Karma's a bitch, and it's caught up with him. <laughs> and so then what are the ramifications for the country, Tony, of having a president who is potentially on the hook for millions of dollars? Does it make the U.S. vulnerable? Well, look, the U.S. is already incredibly vulnerable because of who Trump is as president and the choices he's made up to now, the very fact that he embraces uh, only really authoritarian dictators, uh, around the world, and he is hostile to our, our our democratic friends, already puts the country at enormous risk. Does this add to it, the fact that he is very likely beholden to uh, a series of countries from whom he earns money at a time when he doesn't appear to have much available cash? Sure, it's bad. It's But it's only one of many things that make Trump so dangerous. And he is, of course, vigorously denying the New York Times report. How do you see it factoring into the campaign? And, and how does President Trump's campaign react to you as well, Tony? Well, I don't know how the Trump campaign and Trump himself react to me at this point. And probably they've got other things that occupy their attention. I'm certainly not on his best friends list. Um, I think in terms of its impact on the election and, and, and even on the debate tomorrow, that what we have to remember is, first of all, it won't be good. There's nothing good about this for Trump. There's nothing good about being revealed as someone who has systematically avoided taxes all his life when he has hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue while you've been paying your taxes dutifully against a much smaller income. So there's nothing good about it. Will it change the minds of the people who are the core of his base? Of course not, because they're part of a cult. But will it be one more disturbing factor for the three, four, five percent of people who remain on the fence who are swing voters? I can imagine that it would. And I can imagine that Joe Biden tomorrow night has an extraordinary opportunity to put facts in front of Trump. Look, he's denying it now. What's he denying? Those doc documents exist. If there were any possibility that there was that they were, quote, fake, believe me, he'd release his tax returns. 
He ain't going to release his tax returns because he knows they're exactly the same as the ones the Times has, and they don't paint a pretty portrait of him. All right. Well, Tony Schwartz, we thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much.